is the Get Published Radio Show. And here's your host, Gerald Everett Jones, the guy who has the answers because, well, he's made all the mistakes himself. The topic of today's show is podcasting for authors. And then we'll offer some cool tips on self-publishing in general, in particular, ways to engage your readers. Joining me in the studio today are my beloved partners in crime, the lovely Cheyenne Cockerell. Flattery only gets you so far, Gerald. And the ever-crusty Tom Page. That's uh, Sir Thomas to you, my buddy. (laughs) Some quick background. The three of us recently led a meeting of the independent writers of Southern California, IWASC, IWASC IWASC.org, where we answered questions about lessons we've learned in creating and pushing out our own podcasts. We took questions from Gary Young, president of IWASC, and also from Stephen Sanchez, IWASC board member who is himself a consultant in web publishing and social media. Let's roll it and then second guess what we said. Okay, how about this one? Do you recommend podcasting for authors? Is it like a blog, something that you have to do? No, I don't recommend it for everybody. And I think that that's strongly related to being your own podcast person or podcast host is also analogous to maybe reading your own audiobook. That might not be your flair. And I would say to people like Nancy Schifrin, who's in the audience, who's a prominent poet, I would encourage Nancy to do podcasting because she's a poet. And one of the hottest areas in podcasting these days is storytelling. Tom, uh, I know Nancy Schifrin is a close colleague of yours. What's your take on storytelling? My take basically is it began with spoken language. And in certain ways, when you're writing, the closer you keep it to the structure of how you tell a story, the better uh, it'll be for the reader. It goes much more easily for a reader. Well, and she's a poet, though. I mean, how does how does her process how how is her world different from yours as a narrative science? She, she uses does? she uses richer language and much shorter compressed ideas to get across. Theories and ideas that take people sometimes several sentences to visualize for the author, for the reader. Well, how it's, long would she take to write a poem? I mean, I, maybe it's like... She it's takes question. days. Really? She takes days. And she writes generally short poems. You can read them all, get them all on one single page. But she mm. spends a lot of time on it. However, the inspiration to write a poem comes very fast. Mm. And when she sits down... A huge amount of material comes out, a comparatively huge amount. And then she goes through it. But then she goes through it, she refines it, and she gets all the lead out, so to speak. And the meter. And clean it up. (laughs) Yeah. I like that process. And it's polished. Yeah. That takes a while. I bet. That takes a couple of days. And a love of language at a really really deep level. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, we wish her all kinds of success. Now, we had a lot of questions about getting started with audio, like this one. What does a person really need to get started, and at what point do you move over to the uh, to, to having you know, people that are running the board for you so you can focus more on content or whatever? Well, I'm going to begin by relating the mistakes that I made, okay? <laughs> Which is, you know, I'm the Dr. Phil of what? Self-publishing. But... Um, I've told this story before, but the smartest thing I ever did in broadcasting was I drove my lovely wife, Georgia, to the radio station. And she was, and is, an animal advocate and uh, activist and was leading a march that was going to begin from the Liberia tar pits to support the conservation of elephants, rhinos, and lions. Georgia and her pals did the segment on publicizing the march that they were going to have. And Mark Eisler's producer walked in the green room where I was sitting, because I, all I was was the driver, and said, we're short a guest for the political section. They wisely said, well, you know, we're a charity. We, we take from everybody equally. You know, we want everybody's participation. We certainly don't want to be taking. And then somebody said, but there's that guy. He's a progressive. Why don't you have him on your show and you can make fun of him? So that was my first. That was my that was my first gig. I, I'd been on broadcast before for my for my book, and I'd been on on Leo Laporte's show, so I'd had some experience of broadcast. But you know, I got on that political segment, and 
I screwed up, they liked me, you know? So they often invited me back because, you know, finding people of my stripe with courage, uh, you know, when usually you were outgunned by, you know, some of these folks and a lot of, you know, there were Tea Party folks. And also, I was raised a Southern Baptist and went to a liberal arts college, so I can really kind of debate either side, and that helped. Okay, so I did some of that. What happened after that was they said, well, actually, we'd like, we'd like to do some what they call interstitials in radio. Could you do one or two minute book reviews? I did a series of one and two minute book reviews and they ran every Saturday on KRLA. But to answer your question about budget, I bought a little digital handheld, which is actually, it was about $100. It's called a Tascam is the brand name. There are others and they're, they're cheaper, but this is broadcast quality. A little handheld. And I sat in the back seat of my car, locked up early in the morning before the plane started landing at Santa Monica Airport, just to get two minutes down without a truck going by or a, a helicopter or whatever. It probably took me 10 minutes to get that down. And I would take it up to my PC and I have some audio editing software and I'd gotten to know how to use that. And I boiled that down to make sure that I was timed out at two minutes. And I emailed it to the show. The other thing that I found out and how to learn was I put those on soundcloud.com, which is a basically free site up to a certain storage point. That's where a lot of musicians put their stuff. And SoundCloud has the ability to push your stuff out, your entire playlist, on iTunes. And so my book reviews on what I called boychicklit.com uh, went out every week on iTunes. Then you kind of got into the weeds with some geeky web stuff, but our listeners who are getting serious about doing their own shows might want to know. First of all, uh, how do you create a podcast that is a link and a connection to a blog? And then how do you let the world know about this? Easy. Because there are so many. Easy. easy, not to say, not to, I mean, technically easy. Yeah. Okay, every time we post a new episode on Libsyn, the post itself is a blog entry. There's a blog page that's on their, it's part of, it gets added to our profile on their site. Okay, that has the ability to embed all the hypertext you want in it. So you link to anything you like. And that, like I said, that's got the social sharing buttons, so that can automatically go to Twitter, Facebook, all those places, just like, just as if you were using, say, Hootsuite. But then on our website, we've got a blog page, and so we accumulate all those posts on that blog page. And then that blog page also has an RSS feed, PR Leap, the press release service, which is very economical, it does charge. One of the things that PR Leap makes possible is they will give you an automatic feed of any press release that you issue so that it automatically populates wherever you place it on your website. Get Published Radio will be right back after this message. You know, Get Published is all about helping you. Yeah, I mean you get published. And these days, the way to go is self-publishing where there are no agents or editors or big publishing houses telling you you can't or making you feel like you're not good enough. You know, going back in history, many famous authors were self-publishers. With his own printing press, Benjamin Franklin published Poor Richard's Almanac in 1732, long before he was a famous statesman. That's how we know Ben's sayings, such as, fish and visitors smell in three days. Seriously, if you want to change your life or change the world or both, it's a great time to get in the game. Ebooks are particularly easy. With a click, you can reach a worldwide audience. Did you know that there are more people in China who read English than those of us who use the language in all the rest of the world? So if you've got a story to tell, write that memoir or that novel that's been percolating in your head. And if you're an established professional, or if you have a job you dislike or no job at all, give us that business or technical or even political book that establishes you as an expert who deserves serious attention. Yes, it's easy to get published, but understand you'll need help if you want professional results. Editors and copy editors help you clean up your prose. Book designers make the product eye-catching. And publicists help you be heard above all that social media noise. We have those support resources on our website, 
getpublishedradio.com. And there we've also got a request for services form where you can get personal attention for whatever might be keeping you from getting it done. That's why we say getpublishedradio.com is your doorway to unlimited self-expression. Hey, it's all about the First Amendment. Use it or lose it. Welcome back as Gerald, Cheyenne, and Tom give some tips on self-publishing. I have a question about self-publishing. Um, one of the reasons why people like traditional publishers is that you can kind of hand your book off to a manager or to somebody else and they run everything for you. Not anymore. Not anymore, correct. And so I guess the question is, is there a roadmap for self-publishers um, that you would recommend that they follow in terms of if they decide they don't want to go with the tra- traditional publisher but they want to do it themselves, what do you recommend for them to do to not get off into the weeds or to get taken by some of the people that are realizing, oh, well, here's an $8,000 course to do this and here's $5,000 publicity yes, for that. Yes, the coaches. The, right. The coaches which, can be worthwhile, but, you know, watch your money. So if you're going to go the self-publishing route, do you have a roadmap that you recommend yes. for people to follow? Yes. I, what I would recommend is exactly what will happen and the rude surprise that you will get if you are so lucky as to have a traditional publisher. Because what happens these days, I mean, back in, I I have written about 36 books, uh, 30 nonfiction, six novels. I've ghosted a bunch of others. I am old enough to have worked in traditional publishing before there was an internet. So I had traditional publishing contracts, albeit in the technical world. If you were so lucky, back then, toward the end of that period, and now, what the publisher is going to do, besides sending out a press release and listing you in their catalog, they're going to give you the telephone number and the email address of a publicist. If you get somebody who's experienced as Cheyenne out of journalism school, not a whole lot of experience in the industry yet, you're going to be really lucky. You're probably going to get an intern who knows how to answer the phone and knows how to maybe use some social media, knows how to send out some email, and has a list. That publicist is going to take you through 20 questions. Those 20 questions are going to be the same 20 questions you should ask yourself and do if you're doing it all by yourself because the bad news is the publisher expects you to do it all by yourself. So the first question is, do you have a website? Do you have a blog? Do you know who your audience is? Who's your audience? How do you reach that audience? Do you, are you on social media? How do you promote to that audience over social media? What type of content do you push out over social media? What public speaking events do you have coming up over the next year? Um, what do you have that's newsworthy about your book? You, you begin to get this, okay? Everything that you would do on your own from scratch, they expect you to do. They're not going to help you. Gone are the days when they're going to send anybody but not even a Midwest author on a bookstore tour. And the second, the second aspect of the bookstore tour is bookstores are not where books are sold or popularized these days. If you did get a bookstore reading, basically if you have a book signing where it's publicized in advance, they got a poster in the store, You're going to have, okay, a couple of hours in front of the mic in the bookstore. It would be a colossal success if you sold 20 books. More average, one, two. Yes, that paperback has a platform. And if you're selling during the holiday period, people still give books as gifts. The same reason as Disney still sells DVDs. If you're pushing out initially on ebook, which is going to be the more economical way to go, I mean, you really want to do everything you can, but you're going to spend a lot more money. And if you're pushing out an ebook, people don't buy ebooks as gifts for people at the holidays. If they get new devices, which is becoming a dwindling thing because everybody's got the device, okay, then yes, they're going to, the sweet spot between Christmas Day and New Year's or holiday break for businesses, yes, people are loading up their devices with stuff they're going to read. But actually, if you look at the book announcements for best-selling authors, the hottest month is February because most of this country I don't want to go outside. The same would be true of there's another sweet spot in May, June, because they're loading up their devices with the stuff they're going to take to the beach. More genre stuff sells in the summertime. Your nonfiction, your historical stuff, your your literary fiction that maybe doesn't turn out happily, that might be winter reading. 
I'm not really sure that I see a place for traditional publishing. I kind of wonder, you know, it does not amaze me that agents are becoming storefronts for electronic publishing. And I, I think if they're directing you to good designers and good book editors and indexers and publicists and whatever, that they've got people in their stable and they're charging a fee, I think that that's well-earned money. And we want to make sure that our listeners know that they can find all kinds of support resources on our website, getpublishedradio.com. And then, of course, there are our on-air advertisers, including Runkey Productions, R-U-N-K-E-E. And those folks are listed on our site, those resources, along with resource pages that have all kinds of links to affiliates who are able to support with author manuscript development, with book production, ebook production, print production, and then also promotion, uh, public relations and social media and blogging and website design and all that good stuff. So there are way more resources there. And be sure to mention Get Published if you contact any of them. It'd be a great idea. Is there a way that the, the self-publishing community can, can find resources for how to do those things they don't know how to do? Oh, I'll, give you, I'll give you two good examples. The first, the best being our support website, okay? Those, those directory pages have about everything that I could think of. of the, and if you're talking about places I've been, mistakes I've made, you can actually do hardcover on Lightning Source, for example. Other places that I would mention, and we had Mark... Uh, Coker from Smashwords, they're probably the largest, certainly the fastest growing EPUB distributor, which would be the Kindle alternative in the game these days, the most mature. There are a lot of tools on their website. There's a lot of advice. There's a lot of technical information about how to prepare your manuscript, but also the marketing stuff, what they push out to. They even have advice on how to work with both them and Amazon, which is kind of a cute trick. Okay, uh, two more resources. One would be the Independent Book Publishers Association. Absolutely. IBPA-online.org. They have all kinds of stuff. Para Publishing. That's uh, Dan Pointer's uh, website. Dan's no longer with us, but his his website is still there, and it still has things that are still current. So that's another place to go uh, to get information about all kinds of uh, areas of publishing, really. Not just electronic, but everything. Uh, I don't know how long they're going to keep it current, but right now it's still current. Our website, Smasher's got good advice if you're going the EPUB route, but another one to watch that is not quite there yet is Pronoun.com, which just got acquired by Macmillan. And Pronoun is, Mark Coker wouldn't say a competitor, but I would say he, they probably do intend to compete with Smashwords. They are going to do book conversion. And they're going to do book distribution. Uh, But unlike Smashwords, they're going to require exclusivity. The thing that's really weird is they say they intend to pass 100% of royalties through to the author. Mm -hmm. And they're providing free conversion. So what's up with that? Mm -hmm. They, They kind of imply that they're going to be also talent scouts for big publishers. And of course, now that they've been acquired by Macmillan, it's like, we're going to watch and see who gets the clicks. We're, you know, Because there's no more A&R men in, in, in garage band, okay? They, they just watch to see who gets the most clicks. And then, you know, a record label might sign you and send you on tour, but you know, you're going to be something, you know, you'll be, you'll definitely be, you'll, you'll, you'll probably have your pick of publishers. Get Published Radio will be right back after this message. You know, in all the history of the world, with today's technology, it's never been easier to get published, to self-publish your printed book, ebook, audiobook, even multimedia ebook, and not just novels and memoirs or how-to books and histories, although if that's what you've got, let's have it, but also poetry, spoken word, graphic novel, cartoons, children's picture book, interactive video, games, virtual reality, and imaginative mashups of all this stuff. Get into the game. Along the way, you'll no doubt need some professional help from an editor, a book designer, a publicist. But isn't the investment in yourself worth it? How about you take the money you'd spend on your next vacation and get famous instead? GetPublishedRadio.com. That's our support website where we've got links to all the resources you'll need. And don't forget that request for services form if you crave some personal attention. 
That's GetPublishedRadio.com. Hey, it's all about the First Amendment. You can use it or lose it. You know, Runkey Productions, the audio magicians can take your radio shows, podcasts, audiobooks, and ads from the streets of New York to the outer reaches of the galaxy. I think we need more echo at the end of that. Oh, look, visit us at R-U-N-K-E-E productions.com. I still think we need more cowbell. Welcome back to Get Published, where it's, well, all about getting published. You guys had some good ideas about how adding detail could draw readers into a story, even into a technical discussion. That's what you have in personal experience is a wealth of detail that a researcher isn't... You could do all the library research in the world and you're not necessarily going to come up with, you know, what people were wearing or what they were eating. Or One of the things that, that brought up for me when you're talking about putting in detail and facts was... Back when we were doing nonfiction uh, technical books, we, uh, I collaborated with a film director on, on several books on digital filmmaking. And one of the editors we had was absolutely ruthless. I mean, it was, I, I begged my agent several times to you know, see if we could he'd get the guy reassigned. He said, he said Gerald, just, just survive this till the end, you know, and we'll, we'll make sure we get something nicer the next time. But you're really going to, you know offend the publisher if you try to kick this guy off the team. So basically, I took all his advice. But we were talking about digital film technology, and we were talking about the types of sensors that are in cameras. Well, this gets pretty gets pretty Silicon Valley-ish, because you know, you're talking about the types of light that it picks up and why, why, how it's different from film and how it reacts in different environments and under fluorescent lights like this, for example. And so I, a lot of this stuff I didn't know, and I, and I found it cool as part of my authorship to dig really deeply into some of this stuff. And I was reading stuff that was way more technical than the average reader would, but I, it was helping me understand it so that I could explain it. And the editor would come back to me, and you know, he would have redlined all that stuff. And he says, why is this in there? <laughs> and I said, because oh, yeah. it's cool. Yes. And, and, you know, and he said, this is not going to be useful to anybody. And the thing is, I was kind of forced to take that advice because he was, you know, empowered as a developmental editor. Uh, <laughs> but in the books that competed against us, I think they had a lot more of that stuff. There was a lot more of that gee whiz stuff. The gee whiz factor. I love it. And Tom Page is the master. I mean, those featurettes, my God. Flattery will get you nowhere unless it's really complicated. Then I'll listen. <laughs> So we had another question about how book categories affect sales. Another thing that brings up for me, which actually coordinates with some of the things that Steve was saying about not only identifying genre and establishing your place, but one of the reasons our digital filmmaking books did not sell well, more's the pity, and I don't know that there was any way to solve this, was that the publishers we were associated with were primarily computer book publishers. This was at a time when digital filmmaking and digital filmmaking tools were just coming onto the desktop. And in the bookstores, there was this new category, desktop publishing. Because we were published by computer publishers that also had books on page makeup software and programming, and there wasn't any real web design back then, but because we were published by those publishers, they stuck us in desktop publishing. Well, guess what? Our real competition was over in film production. But we weren't writing about film, but we were writing about how to make your stuff just as good as film. And this is the stuff that people should have really been reading. And our, our competition, which covered the subject much less well, because my collaborator had actually shot the very first HD feature film ever with a camera that Sony loaned him, nobody knew we existed. We were in the wrong part of the bookstore. We contacted publishing chains. We, 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 we got the publisher to put film production as part of the category in the back of the cover. Whatever. That horse was already out of the barn. And the publishers said, we can't control what store managers do. They take it out of the box and they stick it where they think it belongs. So that was a lesson learned. 
We love Tom's featurette stories. He calls them throwbacks, even if it's not Thursday. They run during the week as promos for the show, along with my snapshot book reviews. Say, Tom... As I say, you've got this penchant for unusual historical, well, I won't call them anecdotes because you've researched them to such depth, but it seems to me that the kind of thing that you're doing there is exactly the kind of stuff that, let's say, an author of historical fiction would, would put in a blog. Ian Fleming discovered something very strange, and that was that people really do like to get information, usually just out of left field nowhere. If you read Ian Fleming, you'll know what a Walter PPK is and a Blower Bentley, all this strange information that you don't really need, but it's kind of entertaining. What's entertaining about uh, Elizabeth Colt isn't so much the guns, it's the fact that it was this woman who was a really major character in the uh, manufacturing age of the United States of America. She preceded Henry Ford by over 50 years, and it was her that made this happen. So if you have uh, something like, say, Michael Crichton, if you have a medical degree or never did anything with it, come up with a new disease and then come up with a brilliant way to cure it. It's going to threaten all humanity if you don't get in there. There is a wealth of information that is utterly useless but fascinating. Work it in. Well, make it just force it in into your teenage girl love story. <laughs> <laughs> You'd just be amazed at how many people respond to it. She, uh, oh, the one. What was the one? She was in love with a vampire, and he was a nice boy, but he didn't want to turn her into a vampire. So she fell in love with another guy, and he turned out to be a werewolf. And I'm thinking, okay, she just wasn't his type. This was about angst, and my thinking is, <laughs> lady, you should move. <laughs> and what you should do is figure out a way to get her out of that town Wait. and get her out hitchhiking, and God knows what will happen then. But this stuff, it's information. If she wants to hitchhike, you're going, you can write a route to Florida, and folks will read it. That's the fastest way to get out of Podunk, Oregon, to Florida. And you can make it in, say, 42 hours. The world is full of information Detail. that's Detail. fascinating. Detail, yes. And, and it's floating, and around, it's yeah. floating around like dust moat. You can work stuff into anything. Not to mention it's going to add that much more authenticity to your story if you are working in these real facts that may yeah, seem oh, yeah. irrelevant at the time, but to the reader it makes it more believable. And that's our show. You know, Get Published is all about self-publishing and self-expression. And that getting published and the ease of getting published these days is really all about exercising the First Amendment in this free society of ours. You know, what we need these days are more ideas. Even though we're deluged in, with information, we need more good ideas. And we need debate about those ideas. Book-length debate, not just snippets that are posted on social media, not just selfies and cute pictures of your pets, the things that you really think. And remember, because in self-publishing there are no gatekeepers out there, that is the good news and that is the bad news. So hire some good help. Perhaps you found that here. You may find it on the website, whatever you're looking for, whether it's an editor or a book designer or somebody to help you promote. But hire good help, get good advice, and by all means, please get published. The Get Published Radio Show with Gerald Everett Jones is produced by Runky Productions. Music by Jason Shaw at audionautics.com. Our producer is Lori Marple, and your announcer is Bill Navarro. You'll find links to support services on our website, getpublishedradio.com. So whether you're an author, a publisher, or a self-promoter, get help at getpublishedradio.com, and thanks for listening. Thank you.